Okay, so we're going to be adding in a lot of styling here. It's going to be kind of complicated, so I really want everyone to be able to see it. So let's expand this to be a little bit larger and move this off to the side a little bit. So you can see that we're working with a blank uh, canvas here, if you will. We're actually going to change the styling of our base div here. All right, here we're going to do class name. So we're, we're going to be focusing mostly on styling. We're going to have a lot of divs. We're going to do BG slate 100 H full. And to plan it out, we're going to put some form of nav bar here, uh, turn it into a uh, component here. But we'll just leave that there because we haven't defined it yet. We're going to do main class name. Uh, ignore the copilot autocomplete. We're going to do slate of 100 again. Uh, padding bottom of 20, padding top of 40. So we're going to go underneath the nav bar when we finally have it. We're going to do another div here. Uh, Butterfingers hitting the wrong keys. Class name flex, flex dash column items center justify center. So within this column, we're going to be having something in the middle. Um, and then inside of this column, we're actually going to have another nested column here. So flex, flex column, items, center, justify center here. We're going to do our call to action. So if you recall from our wireframe there uh, or before um, in a previous chapter, um, we'd have our large call to action, uh, you know, one here, our subtitle, and then some form of, uh, continue button or, um, action button. So we're going to be structuring it slightly different, I think, um, just to make it look different. <laughs> different does not necessarily mean good, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I think I'm going to try something out here. So this is the H1 tag. We're going to do margin bottom of six. So we're going to add a little space underneath this text. Uh, in case of a medium size screen, so that's usually like tablet size and below, we're just going to make the text super huge. Um, text of six XL. Uh, or, uh, if, sorry, if the screen is at least uh, of the size of medium, then we're going to have it be big. If it's any smaller than that, we're just going to have text of 3XL, uh, the reverse of what I meant to say earlier, um, text neutral 800. So uh, I'm going to create like a little like fun marketing uh, prose for the call to action. Uh, I think that it fits within the branding of the website that I'm creating, Poke CRM, using my mascots, uh, that type of stuff. So uh, I have two mascots uh, related to the Poke brand. So we have Poke and Pocket, uh, Convert. And so remember that we did um, emails into revenue. But I think really... You know, emails is one thing. I actually think that it's more so turning contacts into revenue. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. But I, I want to kind of lay out two possible ways in which we can do it. One is um, one is more of like a quote unquote like highlight look to text to prompt someone to enter. And then I'll also redo this, but try to do it with uh, a button instead like an explicit button so first we're going to try and just create something that looks decently styled so we're going to use a gradient to the right from uh, green of 500 uh, we're going to add a little margin on the bottom here so another spacing below it because we're going to have some text below it 6xl um, on medium screens and bigger padding of four text uh, 3XL on smaller screens, text center, make sure the text is white. Uh, on this gradient uh, towards the right side, we're going to have green of 700, so we're going to go from light to dark, and then we're going to have width of fit the text, or fit the contents, which in this case will be text. And what we're going to use actually is 
uh, a link component here. Uh, we're going to grab it from next slash link. Make sure that you're not grabbing the one from Lucid React, but instead next dash link. You can kind of see Copilot there getting ahead of us, telling us to do the login. Uh, we're going to need to close the link here. And we're going to say contacts into revenue. I think that's probably a better fit for the value proposition as opposed to emails into revenue. Like emails is the way that we're doing it, but I think for the most part, um, we're just trying to convert contacts into revenue. So I think that's probably more uh, apt. Cool. Um, so we can see here that it appears on the screen here, poke and pocket. Uh, convert contacts into revenue. You can see on hover, kind of click it. Uh, it would take us to a login, which we haven't created yet. Um, so we'll do that in a second. Uh, just checking to make sure I did not uh, miss anything from the sample code. We did not. Cool. Uh, below this, right, we should have a little subtext. So um, let me just confirm. Yeah. So we're going to do div here. So outside of this column right i wanted these two things to be aligned vertically with each other so that's why i wrapped it within a column i guess in the wireframe i could have explicitly made a call uh, a container within a container but it's kind of uh not, i mean if i know what i'm going to do at some point it's fine uh, i'm kind of uh react to this so i'm going to import something called cn here so CN, uh, if we go into libs and utils here, it's a pretty simple function here, um, but uh, it was provided by Shad CN, and what it does is it helps us make conditional style changes, so um, based off of whatever we want uh, to have happen, a lot of times, like based off of toggling, like if you're clicking on something or hovering over something, uh, that's something that we want to... Um, have conditionally changed. In this case, we want uh, our text that we print underneath here to uh, be variable based off of the fact that we can load in uh, some online available um, styling. So what does that mean? That's kind of a weird way of saying something. So what we're going to do, and let me reorder this just because uh, I like it in it. this way. What we're going to import here is import poppins from next slash font slash Google. Uh, so personally, I've been watching a bunch of different tutorials that other people have done, and I kind of really like this. Um, this font style here to fit with this style of landing page. Um, so we're going to use that and we're going to do const text, uh, uh, text font is equal to poppin with an S. This is a function which takes in an object, uh, subsets, uh, Latin. Um, let me see, what is the actual, uh, okay, and then we're going to add in weights, and we're going to do, just as Copilot says there, 400 and 700, so just different weights, bold and not bold, um, so I think that's that, and so what we're going to do is provide our base styling, uh, max width of small, media on medium screens or, or in larger, we're going to do max width of 3XL. So if you have like a phone, we want our max width to be small. And let me hover over it. Uh, does it work? Doesn't seem to be showing, but it just like talks about how much it extends to either side. So on smaller screens, uh, we want it to just be a width of small. On larger screens, we want to take up... Uh, 3XL's worth of space. Uh, so once we actually uh, get this um, piece of text in there, um, we can we can more readily see it. So we're going to have text of large on medium screens below. If not, it'll just be... Uh, uh, well, we'll see later because uh, I'm just going through this in alphabetical order. 
Uh, we have margin top of four, um, uh, margin on either sides in the X, so in the horizontal. We're just going to have it be auto, text, center the text, text color is going to be neutral of 400, so it looks a little muted compared to our header, uh, and then have text of small. And then inside of this, we're going to add a little comma here and add in our text font dot class name. So if we were able to load in our text font from Google, and so Google is providing this over uh, over the internet, and if we're able to grab it, we'll provide the styling uh, or this font. If not, well, we're gonna just fall back to the base level um, base level font. Great. Uh, next, we gotta add in our uh, little subtitle here. So I'm actually just going to copy paste it from my sample code. You don't need to see me writing it all out, but um, you know, just provide some form of marketing information here. Okay, and last but not least, uh, below main here. So just like we have the nav bar sneaking in between this div and this main inside of this. Oh, thank you, Copilot. Uh, we're going to have a footer down here. So let's create those uh, two components that we need, the nav bar and the footer. So uh, we can create a folder with this underscore uh, and underscore being shift uh, and the slash or the dash line next to zero on your keyboard, underscore components here. By creating this, you create an ignored folder, this underscore uh, has uh, next.js ignore the contents of this folder except um, for when you're using it within uh, a page. So this is not going to show up within our um, navigation, right? You're not going to be able to go to, you know, localhost 3000 slash underscore components. It gets ignored. So we're going to add in two files here. We're going to do footer.tsx and we're going to add in navbar.tsx okay and uh, let's start with a footer in ABC order uh, and inside of our footer we're going to do export const footer and we're going to have a div here be the container for our footer we're going to have uh, bg slate 100 border dash T bottom of zero. So make sure that we put our footer at the bottom fixed PY dash four width of full. And then we're going to do another div here. Class name flex items center justify between MD max width screen to Excel MX auto with dash full. So what we've kind of created here is a little uh, rectangle here along the bottom that'll form the footer. That's what this div does. And then this is kind of a internal div without any, uh, doesn't really appear, but it holds uh, the kind of uh, placement of internal components within here. Since we have justify between here, when we put uh, our items in here, they're gonna appear within a row because of this flex with this justify between. Um, we're going to, like, let's just say, for example, we put two components in here. One's gonna appear on the left side, one's gonna appear on the right side with uh, kind of a margin left and margin right, MX auto, uh, of auto. So there's just gonna be some kind of margin on the left and on the right side that's uh, gonna be dictated uh, also by this uh, max width here, right? So it's going to be full other unless we're on a huge screen in which we don't want it to be um, sitting right at the corners. We're going to want it to be um, moved in a little bit uh, to the middle a little bit uh, as opposed to on a phone where, you know, the real estate's kind of smaller. So it's okay if things sit on directly on the corners. Cool. Uh, so something needs to go in here, and look, you can obviously add in, like, you know, uh, a bunch of, like, links to different pages, right? Oops, sorry, div, div, and just be like, you know, about us, um, 
and and you know just have like a bunch of these you've seen them on a website terms of service contacts privacy policy blah 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 right you could um uh, you know uh, why not you can have a bunch of pages right if you create within landing uh, a bunch of different um you know folders like you can have an about us folder about us like that add in a page.tsx and write it out um you know feel free to do so actually it's probably good if you do so um uh, we're just not going to do it in this tutorial but um you know how to be able to do that and we're going to add in a logo here uh in the bottom right corner uh and just kind of mirror it on the top and the bottom um just so it looks nice when you have a long landing page right uh, we're not going to do one that's too crazy, but uh, just in case you have a very long uh, uh, landing page where people are scrolling, you might lose the top uh, na um, navigational like logo button click on the top left. When you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can have one that mirrors in the footer. So, um, you know, on a landing page that's not that long, you're going to see logo on the top and the bottom. But, you know, obviously, if you have a long landing page that extends beyond the bottom of the screen, uh, the footer is going to be off screen, basically. But when someone scrolls all the way down to the bottom, they can see the logo with uh, all the different links to different pages that... Um, you know, we've set to have justified between. Uh, also, let me just go back a little real quick. Um, if we do it this way, I'm sorry, we need to also like wrap it in another div, put it within another uh, flex and flex row. Um, I'll just do it just for clarity's sake, right? You would need to do this flex dash flex row and maybe like a gap X of two just to have a bunch of these components together. Otherwise, these are gonna appear in like a column orientation and not in or sorry not um they're sorry not column i don't know what i'm saying uh they're gonna have space um they're gonna be justified spacing wise in between each but we kind of want these to be together and maybe just have a short eight pixel gap between them right we're not gonna push them you know to have them equidistant along the bottom so if you actually wanted to implement it, just do this, turn these divs into uh, the same link uh, here. If you use the link alone, by the way, without this div, it would just be, you know, it would look like plain text. There's no styling. You could add in an H1 here that's nested within this link to like jazz up the text if you want. Um, actually, now that I'm looking at this, I don't really like these uh, corners here. So I'm actually gonna see uh, add like rounded of large and that kind of you can see turned it from hard uh, edges here or sorry um, the sharp corners into uh, these rounded corners which I think looks better um, cool uh, oh shoot I almost forgot <laughs> I did say that I was going to uh, showcase um, this as a form of button so what we're gonna do is just comment this out real quick wow thank thank goodness I uh, did that to uh, made that minor change to remember. So what we can do uh, in Chetzian, since we have access to all of our components here, we can go in and directly modify things. I believe I went, I went through that earlier. Uh, what we can do uh, if we wanted to was create a special button We can call it like uh, landing here um, and add some specific styling to it. To this landing, um, field here within this variant object we're going to add the following styling uh, so we're going to have active border dash b of zero bg emerald of 400 so we're going to use emerald instead of um, the gradient just to get a little different distinct look to our button here border b uh border bottom of four so we're going to make this look like it has a little bit of a shadow drop shadow there hover bg emerald of 300 so when you hover on it, it gets a little bit lighter hover i'm gonna actually do a animate bounce i'm gonna do this two ways so that you can just see um different ways in which we can make it look like um you know the button is uh motioning you know a little playful uh animation while we um hover over it so let's add this landing here and then you know, I'll save this for now and actually I can just remove this we're not using the font yeah, or 
footer yet. So we can add in our link. So it pretty much looks the same. And this will be a good way of showing that we there are different ways of using links. So we'll just have slash login. Um, and then we're going to use our button here. Um, and we're going to have a size of large variant of whoops landing here and use the uh, context into revenue line here and if we save it there we go and if we hover over it you can see that it starts bouncing a little bit um, I'm sure you there there are ways to make this animation look a little bit better it looks kind of abrupt right a different way that we could potentially do it is instead of hover uh, doing a full bounce maybe just changing the margin a little bit right of like a half um, which uh, if you look at it right it just kind of shows a little motion it draws people's attention to something right because we're adding margin here it pushes the whole thing down but these two are kind of connected elements so I think it looks nice um, so cool uh, another way that we can do it, right, is um, having, like, a uh, margin top of one here. And then, you know, looks like it's uh, moving up, right, instead of down. So, whichever way you want to do it, right, this is going down, MT of one, you're shrinking it down so it makes it look like it goes up. Either way, you know. It's just a little stylistic choice. Uh, if you want to make the button even bigger, you can add in like 2XL, you know, and it actually shows there uh, uh, rounded of large and uh, yeah, each of each of 14 PX of yeah, yeah, that, that, that seems to work fine. Uh, what's wrong with this? Why is this not working? make an issue oh oh it's because uh, I think the number two um, yeah variable or uh, fields can't can't start with a number so we add that in there uh, we go back into here we can change this to 2xl right and it gets a little bigger in terms of like the height so uh, just showed you a different way of doing it I actually kind of like this a little bit more uh, actually another thing that we can also do here is make the text uh, 2xl there make it a lot bigger or eh, excel there we go right uh so that you know makes it look a little bit nicer uh either way works uh i'll just be going with this styling for now um you know you, get, you can choose for yourself which one you like more um but cool so let's uh uncomment this and usually the way that i can really quickly uh import the component that we created is just to remove a letter uh, type in the letter again, we'll find it right from uh, dot slash, which is our, the current directory that we're in, this underscore components here, and then our footer. So we can add that in there. Um, we don't need this button anymore. So usually I try to separate this if this is like a user defined or like it's in uh, the uh, same directory. I like to separate it out from things that are uh, from the source. And then this is from uh, the node modules or uh, within Next itself. So I just try to separate everything out also along with things that are uh, exported by default and things that are, um, um, you know, a general export. Uh, cool. Um, so let's see. Oh, right. And then the nav bar. So cool. Uh, in the footer here, you can kind of see this little uh, border. I know it's kind of hard to see. Uh, I can try to make this a little bit bigger so you can see, right, that this border is now cutting off text because it's a lot bigger. Um, we made a fix, so it's it's going to appear along the bottom. Uh, if you wanted to do, like, a full scroll, um, then we can get rid of the fixed, and it'll just be at the bottom of the page. Um, get rid of bottom, bottom of zero as well, right? But this makes it so that it's fixed at the bottom of the page. If you scroll, um, the footer's, footer's always going to be there. So, stylistic choice, you can make uh, your own decision as to which one you like. Um, now we're going to go to our navbar. Um, 
here. Uh, we're not going to add in the logo just yet because let's get our nav bar done and then we can do the logo, which will be used in our nav bar. Um, we'll just do it at the same time. But uh, for this nav bar, uh, we're going to do nav. We're going to use the nav tag here. And inside of this nav tag, nav tag, I believe, doesn't have anything different from the div tag. It's just uh, a more descriptive way, just like how we used main here. There's no difference. It's just a way for us to, exp you know, be able to tell ourselves um, this part's the main portion, but these are just containers, right? It's just a way for us to... It improves readability. Um, so for this nav, we're going to have BG of white, so it's lighter than the... Um, than the footer which had slate uh, a little more gray color and we're gonna have border bottom flex we're gonna make it fixed along the top uh, with a height of 14 so it extends uh, 14 uh, whatever pixel value that is so 56 pixels from the top uh, item center uh, uh, padding uh, inside of this nav bar of four Shadow, uh, small, top of zero, width of full. And just like our f uh, footer, we're going to do div here. We're going to style it, flex, item, center, justify, between, uh, medium, max width of screen, 2XL, MX of auto, width, full here. Uh, we're going to have some form of logo here. Whoops. There. And then we're going to have uh, some form of, I keep forgetting, login button. And we're going to do some things of that, but we'll do it a little bit later. Uh, we're going to add in our nav bar just so we can see where it is on our landing page. Once we add that, you can see along the top here, if I expand all the way, you can see there's a little border there. There's a little shadow effect. I think that it makes more sense if on the top nav bar, it casts a shadow down as opposed to the footer, right? I don't think it makes sense to cast a shadow up. So just stylistic choice there of why I had a shadow along the top. Makes it seem like there's kind of a fold along the top, um, but it wouldn't make sense, right, for there to be a shadow. The shadow would be off the screen essentially on along the bottom cool uh so back over to here um yeah so we're gonna next create a uh logo button here so uh we got to think about where the best places to put our logo component here uh there's many different ways a lot of people have different uh ideas of how they want to do it for me personally you know, Shatsy and already stuffed a bunch of uh, reusable components within this UI folder. I don't want to touch this UI folder specifically just because Shadzian is going to keep adding it. And I want to confuse the, the uh, components that I make with the Shadzian ones. A really easy way to potentially uh, do it that looks clean in the imports. Might not look as clean in the editor, uh, in the explorer, sorry. Um, but the way that we can do this is just to create a folder called logo and then do index.tsx. So by doing index.tsx here, and if I just do export const logo uh, is equal to, whoops, sorry. Uh, oh my gosh, my fingers. Uh, div here, so just create an empty thing just so that we have a placeholder here, get rid of the O, add it back in so that we can find it. So we're using this at slash component slash logo, right? If we're using index.js, uh, the X, uh, the importer can automatically find uh, our uh, logo component here based off of index and looking at, you know, matching the index with the directory name. You know, if we uh, named it, you know, logo.tsx, right? And you can see VS Code's going to auto import, uh, update the import for us. We would do logo slash logo, which in my opinion looks really weird. So all that we're going to do is just do logo and change this. Actually, I'll show VS Code making the change itself here. Um, whoops. So uh, if I do that, oh, shoot. I, uh, <laughs> 
accidentally hit Control Z. Uh, so that uh, I don't think it's going to change the import for that. If I change this back to index, VS Code is going to ask to update it. If it does, see it removes that um, extra logo there. Cool. Um, so you know, if if I were to just write in here real quick, logo, you can see logo here down by the bottom, uh, on the bottom left there, on a larger screen, uh, you can see there it's on the bottom. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh right, we want to add it to the nav bar here, so we're gonna have logo along the top as well. So we're gonna add that in there. So we have logo there. We have logo here. Uh, for some reason. PX of four. Oh, oh, oh gosh, I did PY. I did, it's meant to be PX of four. So it gives a little space on the side there. My bad. Um, cool. So there's the logo there. Um, cool. Uh, also for the nav bar, we're looking for a login button, but we're gonna do that with the aux uh, um, words. We're gonna do that in the auth segment. So this is to do. Uh, do with auth, which uh, after we finish the home uh, home screen, we'll do the auth. Uh, so cool. Um, okay, so to create our logo, we're going to first clear down, <laughs> clean this up a little bit. We're going to pop back open our logo, but then shrink everything. Just want to clean this up a little bit so that people don't get confused, because what we're going to do is go into our source here. We're going to go into our libraries folder, our lib folder here, and we're going to actually create a new file. And we're going to call this urls.ts. And this is the way that um, when we create a image, uh, it's going to ask for a uh, source URL, which can either be a website um, CDN link uh, or a link to another folder that we're going to add here. So again, we're going to just close everything. I use this uh, collapse folders and editor button here to just collapse everything. We're going to create a new folder at our root at the same level as all of these, uh, you know, configuration files here. And we're just going to create a public folder so that um, when we have our Next.js website, they'll be able to reference uh, items that we will be presenting publicly. Um, and I'm actually going to add in the logo right now as well. So let me pull this, uh, grab a nice image. So let's see, what is indicative of work? Ah, I think this image could work. So we're going to copy this in and there's my little mascot poke. You can see there, uh, he's working away on his little laptop and I'm going to rename this really quick or, uh, so you saw within my wireframe earlier that I have a really cute photo of poke here. So we have poke-crm.jpg. And so inside of our code, we could continue to just write slash poke-crm.jpg. But hey, you never know. You might make a mistake. And instead of writing jpg, you write, might write png or whatever. So instead, we're just going to create an export here. Export const logo URL. And set it equal to slash uh, poke crm .jpg. We set it once. We'll just reuse logo URL in the future, which is uh, the path to um, this image here. So um, inside of our image component here, we'll use a link component again from next slash link. Uh, href here is back to our landing page. Uh, I'm going to do div class name uh, gap x of 2 hidden hover opacity of 75 item center justify center and medium flex in a transition. And we're going to do an image component, which will be grabbed from next slash image here. And um, you can also see that, hey, if we can't find this uh, source image here, 
it provides a little bit of alt text instead of just writing our alt text over and over again inside of our urls.tsx we're going to do export const logo alt and set that equal to poke crm logo there so that we can do alt is equal to inside of curly braces uh or sorry no just within quotes nope not even uh logo underscore uh alt here grabbed from at slash lib slash urls here um we need source which will be our logo url taken from the same spot just going to reorder these real quick um the image will have this particular styling of rounded full uh and we'll have a height of 40 and a width of 40 so we're just going to have a square picture here um with a little circle around it let's see uh did i not where's the nav bar um oh whoops landing nav bar I put the logo in there why is it not appearing oh right because uh on small like phones we're not gonna have uh we're gonna have it uh hidden on things smaller than medium if it's larger um than this kind of phone size uh then we're gonna show the little logo here uh which you can barely see here on the top left um cool and you see that it's mirrored down here in the footer as well um then we're going to actually provide the uh name for our app so uh we'll uh just do poke crm here feel free to use whatever name that you would like um there uh and we're actually going to use a cn the cn function again and we do text of large um actually i don't think that we need it uh, not for this tutorial uh, i usually do something with the logo but i don't think we actually need it for this particular tutorial um so cool uh so you can see on full screens there's poke crm um uh but if you're on a phone we're not gonna we're gonna have it kind of hidden all that we're going to really show is the login button awesome cool 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 uh let's pop the landing page into full screen so now we can see poke crm here along the top we also have it along on the little bottom you see that they're both in a row alignment with each other um because we gave flex on the um larger screens but had hidden on smaller screens so you can see that it's um you know clear here there's nothing along the top here uh when when we kind of have like an iphone view just because we want to have enough real estate to support uh, a login button and look if we ever have any like navigational buttons we might add like a little sandwich uh icon in this corner to uh, to note that we're not going to have it for this tutorial, but it's just kind of a good um, kind of good practice, which follows, you know, responsive uh, state of the art design. So uh, great. Uh, now we're going to clear down. So we're just going to remove everything uh, from our editor here. Just so we have a clean slate. Um, then go into home here and just remember, right, all the stuff that are in home. If we want to navigate to home. Uh, now we just do slash home here at the end of the URL. You can see here there's our uh, button here in the middle to go back to the landing page. It takes us here. Um, what we need to do, uh, I mean, if you click on this button here, right, it goes into login, which returns a 404 because we haven't created a login page yet. Um, so I think now is actually a great opportunity for us to go through um, building the first component of our back end um and really learn how to develop our back end uh in the form of uh developing authorization for our app so that people can uh leverage google and uh good or utilize their google or github <laughs> tongue twister there uh oauth logins to be able to log into our website uh 
So just to clean up some things here real quick, we're going to remove ID. We don't need that. Uh, we have our home page uh, here within our home. What we're actually going to do is something similar to landing here. We're going to create a little uh, paren here and create a folder uh, called platform. So all of our pages that aren't a part of our landing, um, such as home, the a future, actually I'll just do it right now, uh, campaign. I'm going to create a page for our contacts. We're going to create a page for analytics. And lastly, we're going to create a settings page, right? So these are going to be the pages. They're all going to have, uh, as we saw in the wireframes earlier, a shared layout. And so uh, what we're going to do is, sorry, not folder, but we're going to create a file called a layout.tsx. We're going to fill that in a little bit later right now. Uh, actually, we're going to have errors uh, if we don't do that. Um, so what we're going to do is just do export, or no, sorry, not export, const uh, dashboard layout. Uh, and uh, inside of this component, for now, uh, we're just going to have a div, and then we're going to need to return children, which Copilot um, correctly guessed. And we're going to put children here. We're going to create a interface because uh, in TypeScript we need to specify the type children is going to be uh, of react react node here um, so there's actually a funny thing it's up to your uh, preference if you want to like import react from uh, react like this like it's optional it's not actually needed I've never done import react from react but if it looks weird to you for whatever reason, then we just have react.react .react node here. Um, it's optional to need to import React uh, within the Next.js application. So, you know, you can just write react.react .react, uh, node without doing the import. But if you stylistically want to have it, that's totally fine too. Uh, within this notation, how do we specify a type for children so that it doesn't have an implicit any type? We do a colon here. We provide in our layout props. Cool. Um, so we're not going to style this for now. I'll, I'll get to it later when we do the full, uh, uh, build out of, uh, our homepage. Um, but I think we're going to need auth and some other things to do it. Um, and I just wanted to show like how backend interacts with, uh, the rendering of a page. And so, um, let's focus on actually getting the backend working before we worry too much about, um, uh, the the design of the layouts for now. So what we're actually going to do, uh, actually we'll keep this. We'll keep this so that we can have like a little. Um, actually, you know we're not going to need this. So all that we're going to do is um, actually just write. Um, actually, just say uh, just write home, right? So that when we actually log in and go to home, um, we'll be able to see that it's a. Uh, just a home page or a, a home message in the middle. Uh, did I forget something? Oh, yep, I did not export default layout here. So remember to do that every single time. I'm the worst at it and always forget. Uh, and this actually will do a, a little bit of styling. We'll remove that from here. Um, and we'll put this here so that we, we get the styling. So you can see like if we didn't do that, we'll have like a base div of height of nothing. And so even if this says height full, like height full is only for the parent container. So this actually shows you uh, that little mistake that I made there. Um, not mistake, but just um, uh, hadn't yet implemented it. Shows you why it's important to, um, or the, the hierarchy between layout being a parent so that every single subordinate page.tsx will not create it yet. But for each one of these pages, you know, we're going to have a page.tsx. They're all going to share the style of this parent. And you can see how powerful it is. Like, hey, we can have shared components, right? Like some form of uh, sidebar, right? Just like how we did put it in our wireframe design. We're going to have like a sidebar along the left, kind of in a similar vein as like VS Code here. And then, um, you know, let each page deal with its own 
um, you know, sent, uh, contents area. So, cool. Um, let's see. That goes there. So, cool. We're actually ready to uh, develop our authorization. <laughs>